Good evening and uh, welcome to John Larson, co-founder and drummer with Danish metal band Volbeat. Thank you ever so much for taking time out from setting up it in Budapest this evening to come and drop in and chat to us. Welcome. Yeah, yeah thank you. Good to be here. I'm um, 2022, what a year. Um, you've really solidified, solidified the touring aspect of Servant of the Mind released last year. How has it been? Well, you know, um, everything considered with the, what's going on in the world right now, you know, energy crisis, you know, all that stuff, um, it's going really good, actually. A um, lot of big shows, more big shows coming up, you know, a lot of the shows are sold out or pretty close to be sold out. So there's absolutely nothing we can complain about uh, in that department at all. Yeah, I mean, the schedule has been phenomenal. You, when you, one looks at the festivals you guys have played this summer, and it's the festivals of Europe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of them was a uh, welcome return for us to to come back to some of these festivals. Uh, you know, Gospop in Belgium, Download in the UK, um, Rock am Ring, Rock am Park, you know, Sweden yeah. Rock. So lots of, lot of good big festivals this summer. Um, it just shows how revered Volby are 21 years after forming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was yourself and Michael that co-founded the band oh, about 21 years ago, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you, did you ever foresee that you'd be here touring major arenas, supporting Metallica, these festivals? Abso absolutely not. No, 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 no. I mean, when... Well, when the band was started, um, Michael and I met up at, at the rehearsal room that he had. And, you know, he said, yo, I'm going to play you some different stuff so you can get a hang of it and see see what it is. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I knew, of course, his background. Uh, I've known him for many, many years prior to that. And uh, the first thing he played for me had this Black Sabbath type a vibe to it it wasn't a ripoff of sabbath but it had like you know children of the grave uh -huh. paranoid kind of stuff to it and i was like okay yeah nice and then the next thing he played for me was way more like um i would say green day offspring type uh -huh. of like a punky sort of yeah punky up tempo punky type of stuff and i was like okay and the third part that he had was straight out of the metallica song book I was like, okay, you know, that's that's interesting. I said, so which which direction do you actually want to go? You know, should it be like the more Sabbath or punkish or straight out Metallica, whatever? And he said, no, 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 no. We're going to do everything. He said, I don't care if we're going to put something together that will sound like a Sabbath song, then that's what we do. If we put something together that will sound more like an offspring Green Day uh, no effects type of song, then that's what we do. And I was like, okay, you know, that's that's definitely a new angle. That's definitely interesting. And so we did, and 10 songs came by fairly quickly, and we made, you know, a demo tape, and Michael shopped it all over the world, I guess, more or less. You know, he still had a lot of contacts from, from his prior band. And, you know, all we got out of that was basically a lot of the record companies bigger and smaller said well we kind of like it but we don't know what to do with it so we'll pass i was like okay you know that's fine you know we were starting to do a few smaller club gigs back home uh here and there you know and the first couple of shows we did i think maybe five people turned up you know apart from our friends and families you know but steadily we just started playing and and started uh, having a, a little bit of following and then we did the second demo tape and again it was sent out to everybody all over the world and the, re the response was kind of like the same again yeah this is kind of great and you guys definitely have something here but we don't know what to do with it so we'll pass and then in the end you know mascot records picked it up and it basically said the same thing he said i don't really know what to do with this because this is not metal this is not punk this is not rock this is this is a mixture of everything i don't know what to do with it but what the hell i'm gonna sign you guys let's put an album up and see what happens and we were like yeah sure you know and uh, he did and we started touring you know that was all the only thing we knew was actually just tour 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 and touring you know 
driving all the way from Copenhagen to Italy, play for 45 minutes in the rain and straight back home again. That's one of the better ones. Yeah. But that was all we knew. You know, there was nothing called radio airplay or, you know, no major label or anything behind it. So we just kept on touring and, you know, got got on and did the Danish Dynamite tour with two other bands, uh, 18 people on one bus, you know, and, and played wow. all over Europe with that one. And it, we found out that there were actually people who came to see us. And we were like the opening act. We played for like 25 or 30 minutes, but we saw people actually coming to see us. And, you know, so we just decided after that tour was done, we said, okay, you know, the year after we're going to go back and play the same cities, maybe not the same venues, but definitely the same cities. Yeah. And just build it from there. And that's what we did. And that's what we've basically been doing ever since. And it's very much that fusion thing of bringing in rock and roll, rockabilly, Bit of country, dare I say it? All sorts mm. of rock, metal. That's the fusion. That is your, the core of your identity as a band. Yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 never really gave it too much thought. It was just like, okay, we, we basically just want to play what we want to play. And if people say this is metal, fine. We have ne never ever said we were a metal band. Never. You know, or if people say, "Oh, yeah, this is kind of psycho Billy or rockabilly," fine, call it whatever you like. We just call it music. Yeah, and it's good music. It's good, honest music, and it's that you, you're not the next Sabbath, you're not the next Metallica, or the no. next Elvis. You're no. the first Volbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put it like that. There will never be, you know, there will never be another Metallica. There will never be another no. Johnny Cash or Elvis. You know. It, Never happens, you know. So yeah, that's a, that's a good uh, way to put it. We are the first Volbeat. Yeah, and that's going to influence people, you know, bands, musicians in the years to come. And probably since you guys have really projected yourselves onto the wider stage. Mm. Yeah. And well, maybe. I, mean, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm sometimes I'm still puzzled by it. You know, it's, I'm I'm still sometimes kind of go well. How the hell did we end it up here? Well, you know, it's just, it's quality rises, it always does. Mm, yeah. You guys Probably. have got that. I mean, I caught, we caught you for the first time this year in Bristol on the rescheduled dates. And there's a sincerity yeah. that comes forth off that stage into the audience. You know, the, the guys out front of you, they cover every inch. And there's a, a genuine connection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, I know it's a cliche, but we are just, you know, four guys that happens to play music, but, you know, we're the same as everybody else. You know, we are not, you know, rock stars or whatever you want to call it. We're just four guys who happens to play music, you know. And that, that's a sort of very humble way of looking at that, you know, because people say, oh, rock and roll, it's glamorous. It's, and you're kind of just taking it, oh, this is our job. This is what we do. This is, who we are yeah yeah of course of course it is a job now it's a great job don't get me wrong but of course sure. it, it is a job and and that you know that whole i think that whole rock and roll lifestyle thing that's it's it's a thing of the past you know you i don't think there's really anybody out there still living that rock and roll lifestyle you wouldn't survive for two days now with that and you know i've watched previous interviews with you guys and that sex drug and rock and roll cliche it's more now about looking after oneself staying yeah. healthy and as much as much as you possibly can yeah yeah because unfortunately you contracted covid earlier this year didn't you yeah yeah I, I'm hopefully well uh i was what they called a carrier i never had any symptoms at all you know so but yeah i was tested positive uh in the u.s and i spent was it five days in a hotel room in seattle it was most boring experience of my entire life there was absolutely nothing to do i had 64 tv channels with absolutely nothing on it i don't think i've ever searched so much on the internet as i did in those day, those five days yeah and i, I just imagine the overwhelming relief to get back out on the stage oh yeah with uh, oh yeah three lads oh, out front. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to be able to get out of there, just 
go back on the tour. I wasn't even sure if I was supposed to play the first show after I got released uh, because John Deddy was filling in for me. So I, I texted Mike and said, well, I'm, am I going to play tonight or is John going to play tonight? And he said, well, I hope you are. Okay, well, I guess I, I am. That's it, and it just just happened. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, you look at looking at the set list that you've played over the last few weeks. That's a powerful, powerful set list. And it's interesting to see that you've rejigged a little bit from the dates in the UK. For Evie is now back in. Mm -hmm. Absolute stunning track. It was that a you know a deliberate thing to just freshen it up a wee bit. <sighs> No, not really. Uh, it it took us some time to figure out what to play. I mean, there are you know a handful of songs that we know that we have to play. Uh, now that you mentioned for Evid, our idea was actually for the whole summer run and actually this run, apart from Denmark, we wouldn't play that song because first of all we figured well it they nobody's going to get what he's singing because he's singing in Danish so. Honestly, who cares? You know, uh, we're we're kind of tired of that song. Let's give it a rest. And what happened was we were playing a festival in Norway this summer. And a friend of Michael's came to that show and he said, so are you guys going to do for Evie tonight? And we were like, no, 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 no. That's off. Now we're doing the metal set. And he was like, are you guys fucking crazy? And we're like, what do you mean? He said, this is the biggest song in this area. And you're not going to play it. They're going to kill you. And we were like, oh, shit. <laughs> but we hadn't rehearsed, we hadn't rehearsed it or anything, but we were like, okay, should we do it or shouldn't we do it? It's like, no, we're not going to do it. So we didn't, and uh, the response on, on our Facebook page was like, oh yeah, great show in Norway last night. You guys totally ruled. It was great, but why didn't you play for Evie? What the fuck is wrong with you? So we were like, oops. So we had to do it. I think two days later, we played in Sweden at the Sweden Rock Festival. It was like, well, we might better do it today. And uh, <laughs> again, we hadn't, we hadn't rehearsed it or anything. Rob went through it fairly quickly. He was the one that was most nervous about it. And we're like, okay, if we're going to fall on our asses in front of 25,000 people, that's a perfect song to do it. So we did it and we ended up more or less playing it for the rest of the summer. And no matter, matter where we went, people were nuts for it. So when we started to uh, look into the set list for, for this tour, it was like, yeah, we're, we're going to do it. The first couple of shows, um, first three shows, I think was the idea. We would start off in Hamburg and that would basically be the set list for the two Danish shows. And of course, for Evit is going to be um, at the Danish shows, but we've kept it in and no matter where we're going, people go absolutely nuts for it. I've seen people in France who has no idea what Danish is Try to sing along. Okay. So, yeah. so I, uh, I guess for him it is, um, yeah, it's probably going to stay in the set. But you know, we we try to switch around a little bit, mix it up here and there to see what works and and won't. Sometimes there are songs that we kind of go, oh yeah, this is going to be absolutely amazing. They're going to go nuts for it. Nothing. Um, yeah, it must be so difficult to try and predict and gauge what your audience is going to do. Yeah, I mean, some uh, it's I don't know. There's just some songs works better in in a certain environment than other songs do. We did uh, from the new album. We did becoming a lot during the summer run, and we did it for the first I don't know five six shows in this run. But it seems like it doesn't really work on this on this run for some strange reason. It it seems like it didn't really work, and so we figured okay, we're gonna take it out. And replace it with something else so we have replaced it with the song say no more also from this from the new album but yeah that again it seems like that that one goes over people's heads so uh we're probably going to try and switch a couple of songs tonight just to see how it goes be interested to hear because i've got a couple of friends who are out in budapest at the moment okay who are flowing out from the uk to see you guys oh wow nice yeah a couple of ladies natalie and a very good friend of ours, Claire. Okay. Well, so they'll be delighted for a shout yeah. out. Well, we better do good then. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, they'll be reporting back, that's for sure. Um, oh. you know, we can't wait to have you back in the UK again. That, I think these dates, you know, Cardiff, Wembley, etc., are they among some of the biggest indoor shows you've done in the UK? Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, I mean, when when we got presented the tour schedule and it said Wembley Arena, I was like, you guys are fucking nuts. <laughs> Wembley Arena? Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, we we played the Wembley before with um, is it Alter Bridge, I think it was. Some Something years like ago. That, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Alter Bridge. Um, we did a support slot for those guys. Um, but now we're headlining. Yeah, yeah. Wembley Arena. You know, that's... Um, it's a big, huge step up. I mean, we we usually have, we played the Brixton Academy a couple of times in London. We did the Roundhouse. Um, yeah. We've done some smaller venues. We did the Islington Academy uh, this summer. I don't know why, but we did. And yeah, now we're we're going to Wembley. So um, that's that's definitely going to be very interesting to see how how that one goes. And that's it. I mean, and this wraps up what is it? basically a really been a superb year for you guys mm -hmm. yeah you know, success on the road the albums are going you know platinum across the globe what drives you into next year and what plans uh i think that for next year i know they're looking into the u.s and canada um but apart from that i don't really know because I think some of it also comes down to what's the situation with the world next year? I mean, will there be a new pandemic? Is there still a war going on? Is there still an energy crisis and all that stuff, you know? So it's right now, I think everything is kind of up in the air, um, what to do and, and what not to do. I mean, I'm sure we're gonna do something, but right now I don't really have any idea what, what that would be. You're not sort of um, putting any sort of rough songs together on the road no no, no 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 not anymore we used to do that back in the days um but but not anymore you know yeah maybe that could be another idea you know maybe try to see if if michael could come up with some new stuff but like i said there's there isn't really anything 100 percent yet you know there's things floating around in the air but it's all that would be down to a meeting between management, booking agency, and us to see yeah. what's going to happen. And, for and that's a long term thing. I mean, first, yeah. short term, the rest of the tour and get home to Denmark and Copenhagen yeah. to the yeah. families and for Christmas and the new year, I would say. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure by the end of the tour, we are so sick and tired of each other that we just want to go, <laughs> go home, you know, don't talk yeah. to each other for a few months afterwards. I mean, it's not as if you can do the gig and clock out, is it? No, no, no. You know, you're constantly in one another's pockets, and that touring bus becomes quite a. Yeah, but you, but you know, we we have also reached a, reached a certain age now. You know, where you know we know when to give each other space. You know, some days, you know, one guy would be sitting in the corner, be quiet. You just leave the guy alone. You know. If you sure. want to talk, you can talk, and if they don't want to talk, you know that's fine. You know. That's cool. And so, you know, we, we look back at some of the influences we, we touched on: Johnny Cash, Elvis. Uh -huh. But one of the core songs of the set is a real quite surprise: the Dusty Springfield track, "I Only Want to Be with You." Uh -huh. It seems like that's one of those the undroppables you mentioned. Yeah, well, we haven't actually played the full song in years. To be honest, uh, I can't remember the last time we did the full song. We've we've done a medley, um, uh, where part of it has has been included, but yeah. we haven't played the whole song in 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 years. And it's actually quite interesting about that song. It was actually kind of a fluke, um, because then and it goes way back to when we only had I don't know ten or ten or twelve songs or something like that. And and Michael one day started playing the riff and I was like, that sounds familiar. What is it? He said, Oh yeah, it's only want to be with you by Dusty Springfield. I said, Oh yeah, I know that song. And so we ended up, you know, jamming it. And all of a sudden it was like, well, why not play it? You know, it's kind of fun. Let's, let's play yeah. it. And, and we did, and believe it or not, it was also released as a single. Um, I was it all over Europe or was it just Scandinavia? I can't remember. I just remember one of the reviews said something like, this is a bad way to start off a career. You guys will not last very long. And funny <laughs> enough, 21 years, we're still here. That guy is probably not around anymore. No, no. Oh, the power of journalism, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and talking of power, I mean, it's the, the imagery and the stories that 
you guys weave into your music to the songs. Mm-hmm. It's like Lola Montez, Pearl Heart. They tell a story. Is that something you set out to do deliberately, or is it just an organic? Uh, I think that some of it is probably organic. Um, Michael likes to read a lot of books on tour and at home. And at some point, he was very interested in the whole uh, Western era and I guess maybe he was searching for inspirations and then he fell upon these characters, like you said, Pearl Hart, Lola Montez, uh, Black Bart, and yes. I guess... He Doc just Holiday. Figured, yeah, Doc Holiday. Uh, I guess he figured, you know, hey, there's a story here. Maybe I can do, you know, something about it. And yeah, you know, he, he's been doing that for for a bunch of albums, you know, all, also the whole Guitar Gangster thing. and. Yeah who came prior to that and you know the boxing thing for seal the deal and all that stuff that's all in his head that's all his ideas but yeah you know some of these characters had a great great story and he incorporated it into his lyrics excellent i mean i i just just love that imagery and it's what got me hooked when i first heard the um the shady ladies album with the Mm -hmm. gangsters and it's just like Mm -hmm. wow you you can listen to it and you see something there in your mind's eye yeah that, that's kind I mean, of a powerful oh yeah but i mean you know that's that's what king diamond has been doing for the last 30 years almost with almost every album that king ever did they always have a story you know and a great yeah. concept and and so maybe michael has been well i know he's been inspired by king as well you know um so maybe that was in his head somewhere you know king is doing all these horror stories i'm gonna do western stories Fair play. I mean, the, the king, he's out with uh, Merciful Fate in the States at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, I mean, he is. Yeah, and a friend of mine, Becky Baldwin, who I've met a few times, she's out there playing bass with him. And it's just like, oh, yeah. wow, you're just wow, you know? Oh, well, I mean, they did two shows with us um, during the summer run. Um, uh, that was Joey Vera on bass uh, instead of Becky, but yeah, they sounded amazing. And we were like little school kids, you know. It's like, oh my god, we're playing with Merciful Fate, we're playing with Merciful Fate. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, that was, that was so cool. And King sounds, you know, better than he has done in years. Yeah. Really. I mean, he sounds um, really, really good. And, and wherever then, you go in Copenhagen, he's one of the sort of legendary figures that's talked about. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's um correct me if I'm wrong, is it one of the guys is from that band has got a record shop in Copenhagen? Yes. The yes. Denner, is it? Yes. He has a record yeah. shop called uh Beat Bop. That's it, yeah. I think we popped in there one of the last oh, yeah. time our last visit's yeah. over. Yeah. We're we're well overdue a visit because we love we love Copenhagen. It's such a chilled city and gotta give a shout out to our friends Michael Anderson of Target Group Records, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Esker, his bar manager at Zeppelin Bar. Yep, yeah. such such great guys. Sure. I don't know if you've crossed paths with them. Oh, yeah, maybe in the past we have. I've never yeah. been to the bar. I don't live in Copenhagen anymore, so none of us do actually. So we don't rare we rarely go to Copenhagen. That's fair enough. Um, it's just it's just a great country and. Do you attribute anything, you know, Denmark is renowned as being a really happy nation as that part of your outlook on life? Yeah, yeah, maybe, you know, we in general just try to stay positive um, about, you know, your everyday life, you know, try to make the best out of every day, uh, as somebody once said, every day above ground is a good day. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, John, it's been an absolute privilege to talk to you. Yeah, it's been Thank a pleasure. Thank you ever so much you. for your time. Yeah. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to talk to you too. And I um, guess I'll see you in the UK. For sure. Fingers crossed, Cardiff. In Cardiff? Okay. Yeah. Have a great show in Budapest tonight. Thank Catch you. On the other side. Yes, sir. Thank you so much.